Hi everyone. I want to um, uh, talk a little, I'm going to give you some further instructions about um, lab, this lab right here. This is uh, lab 6 or um, or the credit card lab depending how you look at it. It's whatever number the lab I gave you to be with it. But it relates to chapter 6 in the book with it. And in this chapter, what you're going to be writing is you're going to be basically overloading a method. If you recall, you can overload a method with a different signature um, with it. And you will need to be able to write the equal and the two-string method with the same. So let me uh, let me hone in. I'm, I'm not going to read everything to you because you have a lot of this stuff uh, with as well. But the key thing about this lab is it talks about irrigation. Irrigation is basically when you have a feel that's uh, in a class inside another class, a feel that a class get, that you change that can affect another class. And I hope you can you would read the book and will have um, um, a thorough understanding of what that means with it. Uh, the other thing is I need for you to understand what's called to be able to write and pass uh, and return an object with it. The other one is the two-string, which is an implied type of uh, when you call the class that instantiate the object, it will automatically go to the to string whatever the two string is going to return as the string um, that you will create the object with as well. Um, so in here, I want to talk to you about this. Um, I've given you some of these files. Uh, you have the, by the time you finish this thing, there will be, uh, this is the part that you will write is this part and these two part right here is what it needs to be written. You need to overload your task one will require you to do this one. Okay, So you will overload the the money um, the money um, method or constructor I should say um, uh, with it and the other two methods is that you're, you're in task two you're asked to write the equal and the two string. That's in the money class. The credit card class is a whole other class that you will have to code according to this UML. Please code according to this UML. What you notice here is that if you notice the money is this is the class you think of it has a relationship of a mini class inside of a nested class inside of a credit card class. Person is also a nested class inside of credit card. But look at this. Address is the feel for person and person is the feel of the owner of the credit card class. So you, you could think of like this. This is another way of thinking of it. The address class is nested inside of the person's class, which is nested inside of the credit card class. Okay, you see how that relationship has? And the diamond that's closest to the UML, we say that has the relationship to the other classes with it. So, as we look through this thing, let me walk you through some of the stuff with it. And you have some of these files with it. Um, the first task is you're going to be overloading the constructor. That's in the money class. That's in the money file with it. So, I gave you this. And hopefully you would come up here. This is, this is let me magnify this a little further. So you can see this a little bigger with this thing. So, uh, this is the money class and one of the things I like for you to start thinking about is uh, after the constructor which is the constructor is this the, the class and you have your constructor from here to here is the money how do I know it's constructor again it's the same name as my class which is the same name as my file so this is the first constructor you need to actually have a different signature in this so between here, task two is when you're going to, uh, between task one in your, in your instruction, right here, task one, you're going to modify this thing. You're going to overload the constructor with this thing. Now, when you think about how you want to overload this thing, because this is very crucial, how you want to overload this thing, when you do the copy, the uh, constructor with this, and you're going to do a copy constructor, you're going to use, uh, sorry, you're going to use one 
of the money object to make a duplicate money not Monday money object okay so based on what what I just shared with you remember how we use you're gonna I don't know let's you, know, you have to use the same thing as the you would start out as your public we know and the money the function or the method header would still be money correct and let me just set up the framework of the same so inside of this thing all right you're going to be using the money and some sort of formal parameter that you're going to pass across with it I don't know what you want to call it all right that becomes the duplicate money of the object now you realize look this is your money other money and this is double and I'm not you gotta have something different from from this you can't call it you can't have the same signature with the same so this has to be totally different from the same alright so what do you want to do you need to make the money as uh, kind of like a data type down here and call it something else I don't know call it like other money okay so if you did something like money which I'm using a copy of this constructor call something like other money right or other object let's make it easy with so you know what that means with it now this is the part where you need to refer to your book and it talks about how you assign the other money to this now there's two parts of this thing there's what's called the dollar and there's also the cent part okay and read up on what says this okay this is very important all right so read on the this what does this refer to it refers to the object in reference where it's coming come from is the object is the reference point that you need to do with it as well so make sure you understand how you use the object I'm making something like an object other object and you're going to use the dot I don't know, dot dollar dot cent whatever it is that you're going to be using you're going to assign it to the this dot dollar this dot cent with it and it becomes two of the what here's your dollar right so you got your object that you're passing across and you're going to access this data type which is a long uh, which is the dollar and you're going to assign it to a copy of itself which is this dot dollar okay so uh, you know that's where I'm going to leave you with that with it I don't want to I don't want you to look too hard with this thing but but you finish up the rest okay um, so that takes care of part one task one in here task two requires you to write an equal in a two string method so when you look at the equal sign, write a doc, write and document an equal method. This equal method compares the instance variable of the calling object with the instance of the parameter of that object that's returning the true value of the equal sign with it. So hold on. Um, let me before I leave the uh, task one, I want to point um, when you write your your class uh, for for your method for the money when you overload it uh, I found the page number and the section I'd like for you to read on is um, uh, focus on page 414 uh, uh, section 6.10 all right let's move to uh, task number two this is we're still in the money class all right when you look at the money class here's why I'd like for you to do there's a section in the book I think that's that's very worthwhile for you to um, to read, and um, that section uh, I like for you to read is uh, read section six point seven. This is on page three ninety six. All right, 
Um, it talks about how you write an equal method. Now, uh, the key thing is when you write an equal method, in this case, that when you start to look at the equal uh, uh, method, you're comparing his memory address with it, and you don't want to think of it's the content that's what's being uh, compared. So, uh, the method compares the instance of the variable of the calling of the objects with the instance variable of the primary object for equality returns if it's the content, uh, if it's the dollar and the cent of both of them are equal, it returns a true, otherwise it's false with it. So i like for you to read 6.7 on page 396 to cover this thing. Uh, what I really should do is, you know, maybe put a page number down here. Um, section, read, section, 6.7 uh, this is page 396 okay all right so uh, if you could look at that and read through it and talk to you about how you compare uh, what you do and what you not don't want to do with it when you compare the two object with it uh, make sure that you use the proper operator with it equal equal okay so uh, when you compare with this thing and what not to do with this thing Look on page three, uh, 360 to 396, uh, that example, how they compare the two stocks, company, company one, company two, that's what not to do. On the other hand, if you look at the Boolean equal on page 397, uh, it talks about how, how you would write the equal between object one and how you pass it into the equal with it as well. So uh, that syntax I want for you to look at is the if equal symbol dot equal and you object dot symbol and there's a logical operator of an ampersand ampersand which is an and right. So keeping that in mind when you when you look at your cents and your dollar with this thing, uh, when you come down here, this is this is the bottom of the money class with it as well. And I want I want to talk to you about that is. Uh, is that when you look at the money class, what do you what are you comparing? Remember now. So in this money class, I'm just you know it's we know it's going to be a boolean, right? Look at look at page 397, right? So let me just start you out with that. It's a boolean, uh, public boolean is is the is the method with this thing. So public boolean, and we're going to call this thing an equals. This is what we do now. Okay. Now, inside of this thing, inside of this thing, what are you going to pass across? What is this right here? Okay. And what is your form of parameter? That's very important to look at. So, what are you comparing? What are you comparing? So, your formal parameter in this thing is that it's going to be the amount, right? That's what you're going to compare. What's the amount? Well, it, the data type is basically is money with it. Now, in here, this is where I want you to actually write your return. Just you don't, you don't have to do it. It's very similar to that expression on page 397 with it, and how you compare. Matter of fact, come down and look at uh, source code listing uh, with it, and how you would actually compare those two. Uh, if the symbol is equal this or that. What do you return? Remember now, this is a boolean that's going to return. So whatever it is that you're going to write here, this is going to be the return statement. It goes right there. Okay, it has to be. Okay, you know, if you look at the if, okay, it's very similar to that. So look at what you're comparing. You're comparing is the dollar does it equal to the amount dollar. Okay. So you're comparing what dollar? This dollar and this amount. That amount has to match. What are you also comparing? You're comparing the cent, the cent. You're comparing the cent and what? And this cent are they equal equal? All right. And the dollar is it this dollar and the amount dollar? That's what you're comparing. All right. So I'll let you. I'll let you write that, and this needs to when when if this expression is true, and you have to write and you have to do that as an ampersand ampersand with the same to actually to get a true outcome for the same. Okay, so I'll leave you with that.